Hey everyone, Matt here with a quick disclaimer before getting into this video. So today I'm painting the Dark Young from Mansions of Madness and this guy is by far and away the biggest miniature that I've painted. And because of that, I use a lot more techniques than what I have in any one miniature that I've done in the past. And so because of that, I, have a, I do a lot more sharing in this video um, than what I usually do. So talking about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and what I've done in the past has led me to paint in the way that I am now. Now obviously the more that I'm talking the longer that this video goes for and I am very mindful of the length of this video because it is quite a bit longer than any other video that I've done in the past. So what I've done is I've uploaded this video as two different versions. There's this one which is episode 14 where all of the all of my sharing and talking is left in. But if you're not as interested in that, if you're more interested in just watching me paint, go and check out episode 15, where I've cut out pretty much all of the talking except for the intro and the outro, which obviously makes the video much, much shorter. So if you're here to listen to what I have to share, what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and what I've done in the past, it's led me to paint in the way that I am today. Um, stay here with episode 14, but if you just wanna watch me paint, go check out episode 15. But whichever one that you choose, Thanks very much for checking out another one of my videos and as always, happy painting! Hey everyone! Today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting a Dark Young from Mansions of Madness. from the plastic canvas so welcome to another Mansions of Madness miniature painting video. Mansions of Madness is a co-op exploration game where players take on the role of paranormal investigators and then depending on the scenario that they've chosen go into a specific location to explore it, gather evidence and clues to try and get to the bottom of some sort of paranormal activity. Uh, now uh, you know as if that wasn't hard enough um, there are some bad guys to go up against to keep the investigators on their toes and our Dark Young here is one of those bad guys. Um, like all the other minis that I've painted so far, in the base we've got a spot here for the card to go in. Um, got the name, a couple of numbers there that are referred to during the, during the game and on the back we've got some flavour text that says it seems as a tree an enormous bulk with branches of writhing tentacles all drawing prey into its hungry mouths. Now what I think I've worked out from this card here, if you've been watching the series so far you would have seen that there's a few of these bases where I haven't been able to get the card out and what I think might have happened is where um where we've glued these guys down to the bases. We um, we did that straight away because uh, these just don't fit well into the base. They keep falling out. We didn't want to have to keep putting them back every time. We glued them in. If there was one where there was a peg that went through over the card, um, maybe some of the glue has actually um, gone into the card and glued it in because there's no spot there um, on this base and I can slide that straight out. So um, yeah, I think that might've been what, uh, what the issue was there. Um, but there we go, so we've got some some artwork there for our for our dark young. Um, yeah, like the others, lots of brown, um, a little bit of sort of a tinge of green. Um, but yeah, it won't be won't be sticking strictly to this. Um, I'll I'll go into it a little bit more later with what my concept's going to be. Um, but yeah, so a couple of different things about this guy to the other minis that I've been painting so far. First is just the size of it. This is by far the biggest mini that I've painted so far. I've just recently finished Mr. B. That's what I called him because I have no idea how to actually say his name. Um, and if I just bring him in off the side, there he is there. Um, so you can just see the size, the size difference there. And Mr. B is um, a pretty typical size mini that I've been painting so far. So you can see, um, yeah, quite a lot bigger. So yeah, looking forward to getting into this guy. A um, couple of the early stages will be um, getting rid of these mold lines. Um, I haven't bothered with that so far with any of the other minis because of the scale and the detail. I just haven't thought it's been worth spending the time doing that. Um, but, you know, with this guy, you can see some, um, you know, there's a decent mold line there, a um, bit of a dag. 
sort of in there, a couple of spots that um, really do need to be cleaned up because they are quite noticeable. So yes, that'll be the first step. And then I'll get into some priming. Um, I'm gonna be priming in a different way to what I have been so far, so I'll, I'll stop and talk about that when I get into it. But yeah, so I'll get those, get those lines cleaned up um, and then I'll have a chat about how I'm gonna be priming this guy. Alright, so there's still a couple of um, sort of really, really minor mould lines um, here and there, um, but they're in a sort of some tricky spots, so I'm just sort of going to leave them, but yeah, that's kind of clean that up a bit. Um, so this is just what I use for that, it's just the Army Painter Hobby Knife. Um, it's, yeah, just a, a knife I picked up in my last order that I, that I got shipped in, um, because I, I knew that there were some minis coming along that I'd, I'd need to be cleaning up. Um, I just wanted to, to pick one up. Um, I would be interested to hear from, from you guys if, because I, I did see when I was looking around that there are some that are actually marketed as mold line removers as opposed to a hobby knife. But from doing some reading, um, a lot of people just said that this is the sort of thing that they use. Um, um, the mold line removers or what was specifically marketed as them were more expensive than hobby knives. So I would be interested to hear if you think there is any benefit over it or, or if they just do the same job. But yeah, that, that sort of seemed to work pretty well. Um, like any skill, get better over time. But yeah, so there we go. So now I'm gonna get onto, um, onto priming this guy. All right, so our Dark Young is ready to be primed. Now, why have I Covered the base like this. Well, I have finally got around to getting a spray-on primer. Um, as you would have seen from previous videos, I've been using a brush-on primer so far. And for a, a more detailed explanation about why I started off going down that road, check out some of the earlier videos, especially in the Zombie 15 series like Siphon, um, where I, I go into why I've been using a brush-on primer. But yeah, so now moving into a spray-on primer. Um, so I've just grabbed some painter's tape that I had lying around and I've just covered the base with it because as I mentioned earlier, these guys all got glued down when we first got the game to save on them falling out and having to put them back in. So I don't want to hit the hit the base with the, with the primer. So that's why that's on there. Um, now the approach that I'm gonna be taking is I wanted to give Zenithal priming a go um, because of the, um, the forms in the sculpt, I wanted a good idea of where I'd be highlighting, which parts are going to be the brightest and which parts are going to be in the deepest amount of shadow. So that's why I'm going to do a zenithal prime and then I can take some pictures of it um, to refer back to as I'm as I'm doing my highlighting. So in case you don't know what zenithal priming in is, um, Zenithal basically means directly from above and it's most commonly referred to when talking about light. So um, there's a couple of different ways that people go about doing some Zenithal priming, but what I'm gonna do is hit the whole model with a black prime. Um, I'll still need to uh, use my brush on primer for right underneath there where I won't be able to get to with, with the spray. It shouldn't be much left over, but I reckon there'll be a touch under there. Then from about a 45 degree angle, um, hit that right the way around with gray, which is going to start that transitional tone. Um, and then from directly above, um, hit it with white. So then what that's going to do is the parts that are going, so you know, directly above is what the light source will be. So the parts that are going to get hit by the most amount of light will be the brightest. And then there'll be that transition down to the black where the, um, the least amount of light will be hitting, and that's where the deepest amount of shadow will be. Now this is my first go doing this, so it's my first go both using the spray on primer and doing zenithal priming, so I have no idea how it's going to go. It might come out absolutely awful. Who knows, we'll give it a go. Um, but yeah, so I grabbed a box uh, from a place that uh, lets you take things home in boxes um, to use as a sort of spraying booth just to take care of the overspray. So I'm just gonna get that set up and then we'll uh, get this guy primed. All right, so the box is down. I'm ready to take care of any of that overspray. So now I'm ready to get into some priming. But before I actually get into doing the actual spraying, I thought I'd show you the primers that I got just so you know what I'm working with. 
Now the, the black and the white primer that I've got are from the same brand. Um, and it's just these white night ones here. Now these are just from a hardware store. Now I live in Australia, so what I've got access to um, from a hardware store may be different to what you do. Um, but before uh, I went and bought these, I did quite a bit of reading online about people's thoughts on uh, miniature specific branded primers as opposed to non uh, miniature branded primers and universally people said it, it it makes no difference it's not worth spending the extra money on the miniature branded one um, just go and get something that will um, you know is designed for plastic and these both say you know bonds to wood metal plastic and more so these will these will do the job um, you know what it says about them um, means everything that what everyone said um, it needs to it needs to be and just having a 10 minute drying time um, means it'd be pretty quick between coats. So yeah, so that's the black and the white. Now, oh, and also, um, so it's a flat black and the white is flat white, so they're both matte. Um, and then for the grey, I couldn't get a grey um, in the same brand. Or at least I couldn't get a matte one, a matte grey in the same brand. Um, but this one is Rostolium. Now this is a brand that I've seen mentioned lots and lots when it comes to what um, what people use for primers for their minis. Um, so yeah, confident with this one, flat grey primer. Um, says in the big yellow band, also bonds to plastic. So yeah, hoping it at least does that. So this is the first time that I've used a spray on primer and done the zenithal priming so this could absolutely go horribly i don't know yet we'll find out um if, if it does then you know can always fix it so yeah we'll uh, we'll just have a go and we'll see what happens Alright, so there's the black primer done. Um, just quickly, it did actually end up getting right underneath uh, the bottom of the main part of the body there, so I'm not going to need to go back with my brush on primer, which I'm really, really happy with. Um, but that's got really good coverage, it's all looking pretty good. So now I'm just going to do the second step, which will be the grey primer. So it's going to come down from a 45 degree angle, just so that it's going to hit that, that mid range of light. So it'll leave, um, so where I'm expecting is like in the wrinkles of the of the legs here it'll probably catch the top of them but then leave black sort of on the underside where that deeper shadow is going to be now i think the easiest way to keep a consistent angle is going to be just to leave it flat um, and then i'm just going to just hit it from that 45 um, and then just then just keep turning so i won't hold it on an angle like that i'm going to keep it flat for this step All right, so the gray sort of intermittent part of the zenithal priming is done. Um, and I'm really happy with how that's looking. Um, you can see a definite transition from where the gray's hitting, where that sort of mid-level of light's going to be touching, um, as opposed to where that black's still coming through. So you can see, you know, underneath the body, uh, that's quite a bit darker than, than up on top. And it's giving a, a good indication of the form of the sculpt. So if I bring that in a little bit closer, you can see with the mouth here, um, you know, the the grey has touched on top of the lips, on top of the tongue, same on that um, the upper part of the bottom lip. But then if you look in the middle, um, it's still black on the inside there. And I don't know if you can pick it up, but on the underside of the tongue, it's, it's black as well. You can probably tell a little bit better with that one. So yeah, still black underneath, but got the grey on top. So that's giving a good idea of uh, where the light's going to be hitting. One thing um, I think I probably did just not quite right is I reckon I hit from just a slightly too low of an angle rather than sort of really being at that 45 I probably dropped it down a bit too much so that'll just be something for next time I just want to hit from a bit from a bit higher um, because I do think it's probably just touched a little bit too much down low uh, whereas in um, reality the light probably wouldn't be getting there so much but anyway that's for for next time I'm happy with how that's looking so now I'm going to do um, the white final part of the prime and that's just going to be uh, yeah white white spray directly from above 
And so what that's going to do is just hit the parts that are going to get the highest concentration of light and then that'll give that final transition from the white through to the grey through to the black and then as I'm painting I can refer to all the pictures that I take um, to, to help with uh, highlighting, just making sure I'm getting um, you know, the brightest parts the brightest and the, the darkest parts the darkest. So yeah, just going to go ahead and do that um, and then we'll come back after the priming's done and I'll let you know how I'm thinking of painting this guy up. Alright, so that last stage of the prime there is done, that white section, um, sort of where that highest level of uh, light concentration would be, has has dried, and um, yeah, sort of, that, I think that's come up pretty well, um, in terms of giving a good clear indication of the form of the sculpt, where the brightest highlights and the deeper shadows are going to be, um, that's going to be a really, really good guide for that. Um, so yeah, so that, that black uh, first coat, um, yeah, just uh, showing that that deepest part, then the the grey acting as the mid tone there, and then yeah, the white just where that where the brightest highlights will be. Um, for a first go, I think it's worked pretty well, um, and like as I mentioned earlier, just with the grey, I think I probably hit it from a bit too low of an angle. Um, probably next time I'll look at hitting from a little bit higher. Um, just so that it doesn't take away quite as much of the black as what I did. But um, yeah, in terms of bringing out the form, like if you sort of look at the, the mouth here and the tongue, like got that white across the lips there. Um, and even with the tongue, you know, the white's picked out sort of the more of the tip and that then sort of fades away um, to the black um, right in the middle there. So yeah, um, really happy with that. So from the reading that I've done and talking to some different people, there sort of seems to be kind of two main approaches from here. The first is to base coat with very thin down paints so that then the zenithal priming acts as a pre-shade and by using thin down paints, the shading that's happened here will still come through in the paint um, and then... Uh, yeah, it just, just will give that um, the depth of the sculpt. Um, but then the other approach, is, which is what I'm going to do, is to base coat just sort of as, as I normally would, but use the, the tones that have come from the prime as a guide for where those highlights and shadings are, are going to be. So I've taken photos of, you know, from all different angles of this guy, so that as I get to that highlighting and shading step, I can refer back to them and see um, just exactly where those highlights and shades need to be, um, you know, and just make sure I'm hitting those right spots. You know, there can, can be a couple little times where I'm not sort of sure um, if a spot will get that highlight or not, and this will just, um, yeah, sort of clear that up a little bit. So, yeah, onto onto base coating now. So I've got the, the artwork sitting here for the Dark Young. And, yeah, as you, as you can see, very, very brown. Um, you know, there's a very clear theme throughout the artwork um, of all of the, um, all of the baddies. Um, but as I have been doing, I'm going to um, steer a bit away from that and add a, try and add a little bit of bit more visual interest to this guy. Um, so f for me, the the main sort of part of this sculpt, I guess, the main drawing card, I think, is the tentacles. So I'm going to try and do something interesting with them um, and then, um, yeah, try and draw the attention to them rather than the, the rest of the body. So I'm going to be painting them purple because purple is, seems like a tentacle colour to me. Um, but I don't want it to just be a flat purple. So what I'm going to do is start with a, a bright purple at the tip. And for that, I'm thinking um, amethyst purple. Um, and then blend that through to a deeper purple, which will be twilight purple. And then that'll then blend into probably a black, which will then go through into a brown um, for the main part of the body. And then the legs, um, to me, they look very tough and bulky, kind of like an elephant's leg. That's sort of what they remind me of. So I'm thinking I might do them in grey, which will give them that really sort of tough look. Um, and then uh, the like the nails, I suppose, for lack of a better word, kind of like um, like a horse's hooves sort of there. Um, they'll get a bony 
um, sort of colour, because um, that's what I sort of imagine that they are. So I'll start with like a light bone colour at the top and maybe blend that through to a brown um, more at the bottom. Or maybe, maybe not like a real brown, but just a darker, somewhere between a bone and a brown colour. But yeah, so that's sort of what I'm thinking of a, of a colour scheme for this guy. Yeah, just to add, add a bit of interest to the tentacles, that's where I want the, the attention to be drawn. So one thing I'm going to be adding to this video, just in some um, feedback that I got in some of the comments, um, up in the corner here, if you keep an eye up there, I'll put the, um, the colours that I'm using at the time. Um, all pretty well, yeah, every single paint that I've got except for one is Reaper, but I, I will still add that it's Reaper, and just the name of the colour, so that if you happen to want to use the same ones, you've got it there. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you'll, you'll see the, the general colour that I'm using, purples, browns, greys, so, you know, um, any, any will do, but yeah, that was just some feedback that I got, and like I said, I really, really want that feedback, so I'm going to be applying that, so yeah, keep an eye up in this corner here for, for the name of the colour. Um, for this I'm going to be using my Monster Brush from Army Painter. Haven't used this yet, I got this in my last order, um, and I've been waiting for a mini that's big enough to, to use this on, um, even compared to my Regiment Brush, which is my main one that I use. You can see the, the size difference there, and the Regiment one, just compared to the ones that I've got that do have number sizes on them, this seems to be more like about a, about a size 3 ish um a little bit hard to tell so yes this one's quite a bit quite a bit bigger but yeah just with the bigger mini um just save a save a bit of time but yeah so we'll get into base coating gonna start with the legs and the body um and then work up to the to the tentacles last Just at the moment, <clears throat> obviously I'm going to have like the different colours, purple, brown, grey. Um, I'm not worrying about how the colours are meeting at the moment. So like the brown from the body into the grey um, of the legs there, they're just meeting in a hard line at the moment because this is going to need more than one coat. I'm not worrying about doing a blend at the moment because as I come back for another coat, I'll just have to do that blend again. So yeah, just they'll just meet basically at the point where, um, you know, so like around there, they'll just come to a point um, for the moment. Once I've done both coats, then I'll come back and do the blend just so that I only have to do that blend once. Just a quick couple of things. Um, one thing I've been doing more and more of, um, and I've kind of been doing it out of necessity for the last couple of months, is rather than using water to thin my paints down, is just using dry and retarder. Um, now, 
being in Australia and it's summertime at the moment. If you know anything about it, about Australia, we have really, really hot summers. And so painting is not an easy thing to be doing here at the moment. The paint's drying really, really quickly, which is why um, not as many videos have been coming out lately as, as in the past. Um, but yeah, I'm really finding that the consistency that I get from the paint using dry and retarder is, is really, really good. It's nice and smooth and obviously extending the drying life of the paint, um, I get more workable time out of it. So it's, yeah, kind of for those two reasons, um, I've been, yeah, doing that more and more. Um, so yes, yeah, so that, that's, that's how I've been thinning these paints down so far. Um, so I just started a bit of a blend there from the brown um, through to the grey um, and you can see you know like this one compared to that one um, just blending that out it just you know it takes away that harsh line there um, and just sort of ties them together kind of all right so yeah um, so that's what we're up to so just gonna go ahead and do that blend for for the rest of the legs um, and yeah then I'll sort of start to look to get into those tentacles and doing the mouths Um, just while I'm blending away here, there's just a couple of things I thought I'd mention. I have mentioned them in the past, but um, they're, they're still sort of good to, in case you haven't watched some of the, my earlier videos. Um, just a couple of ways in which my wet blending has changed since I started. So, first of all, when I first started blending, like let's say here with the brown into the grey, I would just have some brown and some grey and just make them blend um, but when you've got I mean and, and like brown and gray are not I mean yes they're different but in terms of blending they're not wildly different it's not like trying to mix you know um, like a blue into like say an orange or something like that where they're, they're quite different colors even though they are complementary um, but so just to get that um, transition sort of happening what I've got is um, so, a, you know, a, a drop of brown paint, a drop of grey paint, but then I mix up a third one where I take some of the brown and some of the grey and just mix a transitional tone just so that, just to try and get um, that blend as smooth as possible rather than just doing brown, grey and then just trying to get them to mix, do, you know, brown at this end, grey at that end, but then blend it together with that, um, that 
uh, transition tone, that sort of mid um, mid range tone. Um, and then it just helps to avoid getting really kind of defined lines between the blend. Um, so that's that's one thing that, that was, uh, has been really handy. Um, also just um, when blending, just work in perpendicular to the direction of the blend. So here along the, land, the leg, the blend is happening in, you know, in that direction because it's going from the brown here to the grey there. So the brush direction is perpendicular to that. Um, just so that you don't streak the paint, like streak the brown through the grey, um, working that way just helps to just get that smooth, that smooth transition. Um, I think that point there of just building it up gradually is one of the one of the big things that has changed in my painting like you know I've, I've, I've been painting for less than a year um, sort of on and off for kind of seven or eight months or so um, and just just that understanding that not everything has to happen straight away and not worrying if it's not looking right immediately because it's just not going to um, you know there it is a process of building up the colors building up the layers um, you know, you don't have to do 400 thin layers, but, you know, you don't have to get the look that you're going for on that first layer. Um, and just understanding that, you know, it does take time, not trying to force it, um, and not getting frustrated if you're not getting that look straight away. Um, you know, it, it, it is, it is a, an overtime thing and yeah, just, just working at building, building the colours up and just gradually getting to where you want it to rather than, um, yeah, rather than trying to sort of arrive there immediately. point you can actually see um, because I've got the paint a bit thinner than what I intended to have it at the moment um, you can see just at the top of the lips there where some of that shading from the prime has come through it's I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera there um, but yeah just across the top of the the lip there um, that white's coming through whereas you know because there wasn't any on the lower part of the lip that's not so much and so it looks a little bit darker um so yeah you can sort of get that effect that if it was painting with um yeah with more thin down paint um yeah that shading would would come through um at the moment i'm just playing around just with some different tones to try and get the lip color right because i don't want it to be like too red um but it needs to be a different color to the actual body um Pretty happy with that, probably a little happier than that. That's probably a little bit too far on the red side, but I am thinking I might come back with either um, like the uh, Agrax or um, Seraphim wash just to knock it down a little bit. But um, yeah, that one there um, is looking all right. And that's just a bit of a mix of um, brown and red. Um, so yeah, just a bit of a mix to, mix to taste. So yeah, no, looking all right. while I'm painting the the lips here at the moment one thing I am mindful of in the past I've mentioned that um uh when I first started painting I mixed colors as little as possible um because when I first started I 
so when I very, very first started, I did mix them a bit. And then what I found was that when it came to highlighting and shading, I had a lot of trouble um, mixing up the right colour because I then had to try and remix that colour that I'd used for the base coat and then lighten it or darken it sort of the right way. And I just didn't have that knowledge, and I still don't, um, about colour theory to be able to um, mix it up to the right colour. Um, so then what I did was if something was going to be red, it was just the red that I had. If it was going to be blue, it was just the blue that I had. I didn't mix up variants on those reds and blues and purples and whatnot. Um, but because of, um, you know, I'm mixing up a color here for, um, for the lips. So like the brown there is, is the muddy brown straight from the bottle. The gray is cloudy gray again, straight from the bottle. So they'll be fine for highlighting and shading, but yeah, I'm just mindful of, you know, when I come back to do this, I'm going to need to try and remix up this color. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. But um, yeah, so far I've really tried to just um, paint with the colors straight from the bottles just to try and keep the highlighting and shading as simple as possible. Um, and, and I think that was a good approach um, but yeah, as I get into, um, you know, some of these minis that I just, I don't have the right color for, obviously, um, I'm going to need to start mixing them up. Um, but, uh, yeah, it'll, um, hopefully I can get the right colors, but yeah, I just thought that that's, that's just a thing that I'd mentioned that, yeah, early on, I mixed colors as little as possible just to try and keep that highlighting and, and shading as easy for myself as possible. All right, so just while those um, lips and the inside of the mouth there are drying before I go back into the teeth and tongue and those sorts of things. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more on those sort of nails, I suppose you'd call them, um, but like sort of hoof sort of things, whatever. Um, so when I did the deep one, which was um, one of the earlier minis, um, he's the um, he's a smaller one and he's got like four flipper kind of feet looking things that are blue blended through to grey. Um, you can see that in the thumbnail um, if you go having a look for that. But yeah, deep one I think it was called. Um, it's got, had webbing in between um, the sort of fingery claw things. And I painted that uh, just with just a skin colour. That was just tanned skin. And then I did, I think it was a Reichland flesh shade wash on that. And what it did that I didn't expect it to was it really pulled um, just on the, the the edges where the webbing met the fingers, we'll call them, for, for lack of a better word. And what that did is it created this nice little brown kind of line in that join there that then kind of feathered out to then the to the skin tone and it created a really nice depth um to the webbing and um just added sort of an extra element to it rather than just having um just straight one color um just that blend looked really good um so that's what i'm going to try and do with the the feet nail things here is just get a bit of a brown line that runs sort of around around the edge that then feathers back into um, the bone uh, sort of colour. Um, just so it's kind of like, because if you think about your nail, um, just where it meets the skin, it's, you know, it's kind of got that bit of an effect there as well. Well, not, not to the same degree, but, but a little bit. And so I just want to have that kind of look, just where the, the nail meets the leg. So I'm just going to do that with a little bit of brown, um, feather it out, and then I'm going to do a seraphim sepia wash over that, um, just to um, give kind of a, just less of a clean look to the nails, um, and that should hopefully sort of help with that blend, um, and yeah, just give that, um, just add that effect of where the, the nail meets the, meets the leg. So sometimes you have those sort of unintentional things that happen, those little sort of happy accidents, um, and yeah, they just sort of add, add an extra little something, an extra little detail, and so I'm going to try and recreate that. Alright, 
effect. So you can see the start of the effect that I've got there. So there I just, with the um, with the muddy brown, just run that line around where it, the, the nail meets the, the skin um, and then just started to feather it out. And then just coming back in with the um, skeleton bone, sorry, just try to think of the colour of the skeleton bone, then just blend it back in and just do a wet blend to, to um, just to feather it out. And so you can see that one there compared to there, it just adds that bit of depth to it. But also it's, if you look at the way that nails or something like this meets what it's growing out of, it doesn't just have like the colour of, of this part just meeting the colour of that part. There is that um, little tone in there just where they meet and that, that sort of blends out. And so, yeah, that just kind of adds an extra little element. So happy with how that looks. So, yeah, going to do that to, to each of them. Just as I'm painting little bits like that, um, or like, like this here, I'm sort of thinking back to the way in which um, my paint thickness has, has changed over time um, and how more, or how much more varied the thicknesses are that I actually work with now. Um, because even just in something like, just, you know, this part here, um, the brown that I'm putting on that edge is, Unthinned. It's just no water or anything. It's just straight from the straight from the bottle. And then uh, again, if you've been watching some of my videos, you know I'm a brush licker, much to my wife's absolute horror. Um, so then I'm feathering out with with very little paint on the brush, um, but the bristles are wet. Feathering the brown out, and then coming back in with. Um, some slightly thinned down skeleton bone just with some dry and retarder and then starting at this end feathering that back in and then licking the brush again and then basically taking all of the paint off to then feather the that brown and skeleton bone mix then back out towards the tip so you've got full thickness paint against in that join between the bone and the and the leg then kind of kind of thin down skeleton bone to then blend from the tip back into that full thickness brown and then with no paint but just wet bristles then feathering back out in that direction just so that um, because each of those different consistencies has a purpose so the full thickness is so that I can keep that deep brown at this end but there's enough there that I can blend it out then it's the skeleton bone is thinned down so that it will blend into the brown and then with n no with, with just um, wet bristles then it's thinning it even more to then blend it from the from the brown back out to the skeleton bone that's already there and so you know it's just all those little things that you don't necessarily do consciously but just over time you work out that you know there's um, like you don't just do the same thing in the same way every time. Um, and, you know, it's it would be really, really hard to actually teach that sort of thing. Um, it's things that you just learn. But, you know, um, painting with different consistencies is, uh, yeah, definitely something that's that's helped my painting. Um, but anyway, so there we go. That's got to start on those, um, on those nails. So when that properly dries, I'm going to come back and then redo that line just to... Um, give that line a bit more definition so that it won't blend into the paint that's that's already there. Um, but it looks like the inside of the mouths is, is dry enough now, um, so I can go ahead and do the teeth and, and the tongues.
can see I've just sort of come back to touch up this blend on the part of the leg here. And this kind of goes back to um, what I was mentioning earlier about um, not expecting everything to happen straight away and, you know, building up your layers over time and, you know, things like a blend. You can do a first blend and then come back and do another one. And because what's happened here is, you know, the paint looks different when it's wet compared to when it's dry. And as it was wet, the blend looked all right. But now that it's dried, there was too much of a defined line between the brown and the grey to sort of where the, the sort of top part of the leg meets the knee. Um, and so now I've seen that I can go back and do that again. So it's just an important thing to keep in mind that, you know, not everything has to look right the first time that you do it. Um, you can build up to it and you know don't sort of get frustrated if you just if it's just not quite looking right um it takes time it takes a few steps um but yeah let it dry have a look at it come back sorry camera stop recording there i can see it's still not right um so it still needs a little bit more work but that's okay um because it'll it'll get there So just here, um, just to sort of continue getting that blend, um, I absolutely did an awful job of this one, um, but just with the Seraphim sepia, what I'm doing is just with a, with a bit of water on the, um, the bristles, um, then I'm just catching, just put them down for a second, I'm just catching just the edge of the, of the wash um, in the little, um, I don't know, um, cup sort of part there in the lid. Just so I've only got a little bit of wash on the brush and then just putting it, just putting a layer of it just where the, the nail meets the leg. Um, and then again, um, washing the, um, the paint or the wash off the bristles. So there's a little bit of water on there and then just feathering it out in the same motion that I was with, um, with the paint. Um, just so it sort of helps with that gradual, um, transition and gradient there. Um, I was way too heavy handed with this one here. Um, and yeah, it's, um, it looks a lot, uh, it's just, um, don't really know how to, how to describe it. It's just, it, it's just not smooth. Um, so like there's, um, you know, if I sort of bring them into, to compare against, like it's sort of, you know, it's darker there, then there's really like a, um, quite a defined line just along the edge there um, and then there's this line of it that then comes along the bottom and then comes up the side along the bottom's fine um, and yeah it's just really really inconsistent like along here you can see um, like I've got some of it there um, it hasn't been blended out and then and there's just this line of it there as well that just looks really really ugly so I'm going to go back over that with the bone um, get that blend happening again and then I'll do the um, go back with the seraphim but on this one here um, that looks a lot better because with this one here, I just did a wash straight over the thing. Um, it looked awful, so I'll go back and fix that one up. But with this one, better transition there. Just adds a bit more depth with the with the wash. Um, but also because I don't want. So if you sort of then come back to this one where there's no, it, it's just the bone color. Sorry, on the tips of the uh, nails there. Come back around to here where the wash is. It's just not as bright, um, and you know because he's been might have been walking through the dirt, something like that. Um, just knocks the brightness down. Um, but also, like if you look at say like your own nail, um, there's no really bright sort of white spots. So I don't I don't want it to have that brightness. Um, but yeah, just gets that transition, um, gets it more of that nail kind of look. Um, but yeah, still got that nice sort of deep line there against the against the leg. But yeah. That one's awful, that one looks good, so I'll, I'll, I'll be fixing that one up. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention there just the way that I'm actually doing it. So with water in the bristles first, um, then just catching the edge of the paint in that little um, sort of cup thing, just so there's only a little bit, and then feathering it out in the same motion that I was doing with the actual paint. If 
you've seen my, some of my videos so far, um, you know, I love putting Seraphim on teeth and like obviously bone sort of material. Um, but just with the teeth, like, you know, I painted them the bone color and they're very, very white on that side there, that one there. Um, but then just coming back around to this one here where I've just put the Seraphim there, it just gives it that more off-white towards yellowish kind of color without taking away from it too much. Um, and I just think that that works really, really well. Um, so yeah, a lot of the time I like putting that wash on there um, just to, you know, because something like this, I mean, it's not going to have bright white teeth. There's no toothbrush there. So yeah, that just dirties it up a little bit. Um, might even put like a, a little bit more on as it dries a bit just to um, yeah, just kind of almost gives it that yellowish kind of tinge, um, and I think that 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 just has a good a good effect. So that's a pretty sort of stock standard thing that I do um, in situations like that, just so it's not quite so bright and white, and you know, which is a bit unrealistic, really. So we're going to get into go doing the um, the tentacles now, which is sort of the main feature of, of this guy. Um, so we're about to find out if I've bitten off a little more than I can chew um, with the way that I'm going to paint this guy. So yeah, um, amethyst purple for starting from the tip of each tentacle, working through to twilight purple through the middle, and that's going to blend into a black as each tentacle meets the body which will then blend into the brown so then hopefully that'll sort of create like a nice smooth transition from the tentacle through down to the legs um yeah obviously there's quite a few so there'll be a bit in this um and yeah in in my head it's gonna look pretty good let's see if we can uh, actually get that to come out onto the mini
I guess what I call a base coat done for for the tentacles. Um, now at the moment it's very very rough um, because I'm obviously going to come back and need to do a second coat. I haven't spent too long on um, getting really any sort of smoothness, smoothness to the blends because I'm just going to be going back over them. All I really wanted to do was just kind of lay the foundation for where the um, brighter parts and the dark, darker parts of the tentacles would be. And um, yeah, just get a little bit of a base for those blends so that, <clears throat> sorry, um, when I come back and do that second coat and then I actually do that proper blend on the tentacle, I've got, you know, the a uh, start for the transition that I wanted to. Um, and as you can see, like where the black comes into the brown, th there's no blending there at all. So that'll all happen when, um, when those two coats are done. But yeah, it's, it's given a bit of an idea of how that's going to look. A um, couple of things that I have noticed that I'll need to change up a bit for the second coat, which will hopefully be the final coat. Um, one is the paint consistency. It was um, definitely on the thin side and I just bled um, a little bit in some spots that I didn't want it to. Um, and you can sort of see just where... Um, just where this part of the tentacle here meets the body. It's just bled a bit um, just off to the side there um, and just a couple of spots where, like from one tentacle to another. It's it's absolutely fine at the moment, so I didn't worry about um, getting on top of that just because I wanted to get the paint down. But yeah, for the second coat, the paint will need to be thicker. Um, the other thing is just the contrast. Because um, you can tell that it's going from a light purple to a darker purple in some spots. Um, and the only spots where you can really pick that up is where um, two tentacles cross each other in a spot where the blend isn't the same. So say like here for argument's sake, um, where you've got a, a, like this is still a, a bright part of the tentacle as this one's hooking in and around um, and it's running past the, the deeper purple of this tentacle. So you get a little bit of the contrast there, but overall um, that contrast isn't there as much as I want it to be. Um, and yeah, I really want to push that it's going from that light purple through to the dark purple. The black's fine, whatever. Um, so yeah, just where I do that, um, just on the tips. I'm just going to lighten the amethyst purple off a bit, um, just with a little bit of white, um, just so then it can blend from a brighter tip through to that, then through to that deeper purple, which will hopefully just push that contrast a little bit more. But yeah, for a, for a, for a start, it's it's fine. Um, it's like it's like the foundation for um, the what will hopefully be the final coat. Um, but yeah, so just going to let all of that dry. And then I'll come back and yeah, do that second coat. And when it's at the final coat, I'll then blend that black through to the brown so that I don't have to do that too many times. stopping at this point so I'm now going through with the second coat and already I'm much much happier with how this this one tentacle that I've done is looking um, compared to the other ones um, so yeah so I've, I've still got that amethyst purple from the tip but I mixed in some white just to lighten it off and I think that contrast has worked a lot better between that that bright point there and the, the deep purple that it's ended up there compared to say well there's, there's a good good example so compare you know here to this tentacle here to this one here really makes it much more obvious the blend um, or the contrast that's happening within the tentacle. So yeah, going to keep doing that. So by the time you know all of them done, there should be that good um, good contrast between the tip, how bright of a purple it's coming from, or sorry, how light of a purple it's starting at, to how deep it's it's ending up. And that's just I really really just want to push that um, that gradient that's happening. Um, but yeah, with with all the tentacles kind of going in and out between each other, um, that was just getting a little bit lost. Um, also, the the thickness is better. Um, 
it's still thinned down a little bit, but just with water this time. Um, and yeah, it's it's already um, bleeding less. So yeah, happy with that. So I'm just gonna keep going through and, and do the rest of the tentacles. Thing with blending, I think I mentioned it earlier um, that when I'm blending a lighter color and a darker color together, I blend the light into the darker because if I, f I find if I blend the darker color into the lighter one, it overpowers it too much. So like here with, you know, sort of like the, the, the mid purple going into the dark purple. So I blend the mid into the dark because if I go the dark into the mid, it's going to take a lot longer. That blend's going to have... Um, you know, this purple is going to push a lot further that way before I actually get that blend. Um, then what it does if I start with the medium and bring it back that way just because the light doesn't overpower the dark um, quite so much. Um, but also what I do, because there is a bit of a difference between the medium purple here and the dark purple, um, so obviously I paint the medium purple first to a point, then I paint the dark purple, then I'm washing the brush off, and then just getting a little bit of the medium purple on the bristles, so the lighter purple, and then with that on the bristles, then doing that blend. If the colors are quite close together, I don't worry about doing that, but I just find if I've got that extra bit on the bristles, it just helps to get that blend happening rather than, um, you know, the, the lighter colour going into the dark and then basically just disappearing straight away. So, yeah, ha um, if the colours are a bit different, a little bit of that, that lighter colour on the bristles, but if they're about the same, it doesn't really matter. It's fine. I find it just blend the lighter straight into the darker.
we'll stop at this point. Um, one thing that is a big difference in my painting now to when I started, and I, I mentioned this in video after video after video, is pushing the contrast. The, the difference between the brightest and the darkest parts of the mini. Um, and I think just where I'm painting at the moment, just these couple of last, these are the last three tentacles to do. I think this tentacle here, which I've just finished, and this one here, are a really good example of the effect that contrast has. So this one here has been done, like, you know, it's had the first coat, and here's the, the brighter purple that I started with, blended through to the darker purple, and it just, that transition and the different tones in there just doesn't come out nearly as far as this one here, it starts with that really, really, really light purple, well on the way to being white, and then blending through. And the difference here is that the brightest purple here is that purple there. So the the brightest spot in the um, the original layer is now the mid tone in the in the tentacles. And you know, if I just sort of slowly go around, just that contrast. Um, between the tip of the tentacles and then you know the, the mid tone and then through to the end of it It just brings that out so much more um, And so the same goes for just highlighting and shading um, Just really really pushing the brights and really really darkening the darks and it makes a big difference um, Yeah, and then you know so like I have said before, you know, I'm painting board game minis when these go in the middle of the table, those little bits of detail, they, they easily get lost. And so you really need to be painting, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's up to you how you paint it, but I really paint it for the middle of the table. So for this guy sitting in the middle of the table, a metre away from everyone, and I want those, um, those transitions to come out. And I just, yeah, I just wanted to stop because I think those two tentacles there right next to each other are a good example of what I mean by contrast and the effect that it has. So I just finished that blending from the tentacles through to the main part of the body um, and all I did there was obviously because the brown was done uh, a couple of stages ago um, I just put a bit of brown just where that blend was going to happen um, and then a bit of black back in again where, where that blend was going to be um, and then just feathered them into each other um, just where the tentacles here meet the legs. Um, I worked the brown further up into the tentacles so that there wasn't such a obvious line between tentacle and leg. I wanted it to sort of have a bit of a blend so it looked like the tentacle just kind of ended up turning into the leg um, and I might need to push that a little bit further but it's at least got a bit of a start but um, like the one here I'm happy with with that transition there from from the brown from the leg up into the body. So that's the base coating done for the main part. Um, there's all these little, um, you know, you can just see one like there. Um, there's like these little, almost like noses they kind of look like um, from, from some different artwork that I've looked at. I'm not actually sure 
what they're supposed to be. Um, and then there's these sort of little lumpy bump things around. Um, so I'm just going to paint them up with um, just a, um, the skeleton bone colour. Um, and then I'll go over them with the sepia wash just like I did here. So it'll just kind of give them that kind of almost like a pussy kind of look. Um, like there might be some wart sort of things. Um, and then, yeah, with these nose kind of things, they kind of look like pig noses to me. Um, that'll just give a bit of definition to them um, as it falls into those recesses. And I'll sort of see how that looks. Um, I'm not I'm not sure if, if it'll actually look okay. But um, I'll give it a go and, and, yeah, see how it works. see there with the seraphim sepia that I've started to put on some of these kind of warty sort of things whatever they are on the tentacles um, that it just starts to yellow them up a little bit and just give them that bit more of a kind of pussy infected sort of look so it kind of takes away that real sort of whitish kind of look from if you sort of look from that side bring it around to there um, um, yeah just that more yellowy browny kind of look um, but also what it's doing is, um, because each of these are, you know, they're a little bit different, in some cases the, the wash is spreading out to the edge and it's going to form a bit of a darker ring around the outside of the, or, or around the outside ring, edge of the each of the warts, whereas for some of them it's moving to the middle. Um, so that'll give a bit of a different effect. But then also I'm being inconsistent with the amount of wash that I actually put on. So I'm doing kind of a few before I go back to the pot. So that the first one kind of gets a bit, then the next one a bit less, bit less. So there's gonna be some um, some different levels of actual um, wash going on. So there'll be some different shades of this kind of yellowy pussiness just to give a bit of contrast between them. So around the tentacles and just up around the top of the, the mouth, these nose sort of things, um, that sort of come up. I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. Um, so yeah, so that was just a skeleton bone with the seraphim sepia over the top. And that's, um, yeah, just given that kind of pussy kind of warty look. Um, but it's also acted as a bit of a way to break up some of these more solid colours. Um, that's a thing that I've found... Um, you know, from, from looking at different minis that people have painted, one of the things that stands out the most to me is when a miniature really has the colours broken up. So rather than just having big slabs of a single colour, just something in there just to, to break it up a little bit. And so across the tentacles, that sort of helps to do that. Um, and then also through there. Um, but these uh, nose things continue underneath the body just that textured part under there is the same same looking thing um, but because this is underneath the body and is going to be in more shadow than what these are I'm going to paint these in the 
probably the tanned skin color, um, just so it's a little bit brighter than the brown. I might actually mix a little bit of brown in with this, um, but just so it's just a little bit brighter. Um, and then I'm gonna go through with my um, just um, Agrax Earthshade Wash, um, just to, to knock it down a little bit. So it'll stand out a little bit from the, the base coat brown, but it'll be darker than these ones up here. So it just, yeah, will look like it's in, in a bit more shadow. But yeah, so that's just the, the next step. So what I'm actually thinking of doing here is going around and doing sort of the top one or two rows of these nose sort of detail thingies. Um, so this is tan skin with just a little bit of the muddy brown mixed in. Um, and then after I've done a row or two um, around each side, um, so then I'll come back to the start point and now I mix a little bit of a little bit more brown in and do the next row and go around and do that third row with a little bit more brown then head back around for another lap each row will just have a little bit more brown um, until it's it's just brown so it'll hopefully have that gradual fade from mostly tan skin with a little bit of brown to straight brown and yeah we'll hopefully just sort of fade out as the lights disappearing um, but yeah so just a little bit of brown a little bit more brown for each row um, just to get that transition So there we go, so that under section there has been done um, and I went back right at the end there with pretty well straight um, tanned, tan skin, yep, tan skin um, and just picked out just the tips of um, some of the raised parts just towards the top so that when the wash goes on there still will be that little bit of contrast there um, but yeah, so that's just picked them out and just brought that texture out a little bit more so what I'm going to do now is to start the shading in the legs now in the past, um, because of the scale of the minis that I've done in the past, which have been, you know, about yay big or so, at this point, I just want to simply, I would simply do a wash, um, and then the first step of the highlighting would be to go back to the base coat and just paint with the base coat where the light would be hitting, and then gradually lighten that colour off until I got to the highest level of, of concentration. Um, but I'm a little worried with using a wash um, because the surfaces are quite a bit bigger, um, that if it sort of um, ends up being if the if it's not if it's not smooth and has any blotchiness to it or anything like that, it's going to be quite obvious. So what I'm going to do for this uh, for this guy is just to build the shade up just with some layering. So and this is the first time that I'm going to have a go at doing this. So all all I'm going to do is take um, the grey, which is the base coat, which is this cloudy grey, and mix a little black in with it just to darken it off, and then thin it down. So then what I'll be able to do is just put layer after layer of thin paint on and just build it up to the level of depth that I want. Um, so spots like under the legs, in this little recess just in, in here, just layer it in there and because the paint will be thin, each layer won't make much of a difference. So then I'll be able to control how dark it goes. Um, and then when I come back with the highlighting, um, then with just, um, you know, by lightening the cloudy grey off just a little bit at a time, um, pick out where the highlights are going to be, um, and especially in the in the legs, you know, you can see they're quite textured, um, you can see in there. Um, yeah, just, just pick out those parts where the light's going to catch, 
um, and then gradually lighten it off, lighten it off, lighten it off until I'm just painting just the parts that are going to get the highest concentration of, of light. Um, and as I as I have been sort of practicing a bit um, more recently, is really building that contrast. So not just bringing it up to a slightly lighter grey, um, but in the brightest spots, almost just painting white. Um, but yeah, so it'll take a little bit to build up. But yeah, so the, the shadows, I'm going to do just by layering. So you darken the grey off and thin it down so that each layer is quite thin and it'll take quite a few layers to build up to the, the shadow that I want. And, and then with the highlights, just pick out those raised bits um, where the light's going to be hitting. Um, and yeah, just gradually lighten it, lighten it, lighten it um, until almost painting white. And that at, by that point, I'll be painting very, very small bits, just picking out those those brightest highlights. And yeah, I'm using the, the pictures that I took of the Zenithal Prime um, to help with um, with where those brightest points will be. Just before I get into doing the highlighting on the Dark Young's legs, I just wanted to stop and just talk a little bit about the shading that I did there because as I said before I started, um, I haven't shaded 
in this method before. Normally, you know, with a smaller mini, I'd just do a wash and then just start to bring it back up to the base coat and then lighten off from there. But here, um, just darkening off the base coat and then really, really thinning it down, like really, really thin. Um, and obviously the, the idea of that was so that each layer wouldn't make much of a difference to what was there previously, so that I had a lot of control as I, as I built those layers up. Um, I'm really, really happy with the, with the shading that I got on the legs there. Um, it'd be good at this point um, to be able to do like a, like a direct comparison to see what it looked like beforehand and what it looks like now. I do have some photos, um, but there is much more depth to the legs, especially um, on the, the inner sections there where the deepest amount of shadow is. But just the, all these folds in the legs just have, have come out really nicely. Um, so... Yeah, having it really, really thinned down, obviously I could I could build it up over time. Um, but a couple of things that I wasn't really expecting was just how much control I actually had over the paint. I thought with it being so thin, it might run away from me a little bit. Um, just, you know, go into some spots that I didn't want it to. Um, but it really sat um, really quite well. And also I could feather it out really nicely um you know looking at like just where this this shadow um comes up there um just that one there it just blends out nicely into nothing so that it just has that nice transition um and then also the way that i could blend a shadow in one spot into a shadow in another um just to really sort of show where those contours are so yeah i had a lot more control over it than what i thought i would and um but then as I expected, I was able to, to build those layers up quite gradually. Um, and then, yeah, I worked my way to well on the way to black um, just for those last few um, spots that I picked out just to get sort of those, you know, sort of looking in there, um, just those deeper, deeper parts of the shadow. So, yeah, I'd sort of be looking maybe next time I go back to a smaller mini, um, looking at doing the same sort of layering technique and just seeing how it works on a smaller one um, because yeah I had a lot more control than what I thought I would so mightn't have to sort of be resorting to washes all the time but that's just something that I'll be looking at in the future but yes yeah, so I'm really really happy with how that came up. So now I'm going to highlight the legs, um, the lips and the tongue and this guy should be just about done. So yeah, I'm just going to start with um, the, the cloudy grey that was the base coat colour and then just with a bit of white, just lighten it off, start to pick out where the light's going to be hitting and then lighten it off a bit more. Um, and then just as I lighten it, just painting less and less and less until I end up with almost sort of pure white um, to have that sort of sharp contrast um, and then just picking out just the spots where the most amount of light is, is going to be hitting. Um, and yeah, just, just feathering it out. So as I put the paint down, then just for me, licking the, the, um, paint off the, the bristles, leaving them wet and then just feathering out the edge so that it sort of goes down to nothing and just sort of get those, those nice blends. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be the process for the, for the rest of it. Um, yeah, just wanted to stop just to talk about the, the shading there because I was really happy with that and, um, yeah, surprised that I would be thinking that I might take that approach to, to a smaller mini.
Um, just before I go on with any more of the highlighting on the legs, there's just a couple of things I wanted to point out, um, just some observations that I'm making as I'm going. So I stopped at the end of the shading of the legs to talk about how surprised I was with the control that I had with the paint for the shading because I had it just so thin. Um, and how smooth it was to you know keep control of and to feather out and all those sorts of things and it just yeah it, it all round it just worked better than than what I thought it would. Um, but with the with the highlighting that I'm doing, um, I don't know if it was sort of conscious or whatever, but I've gone back to sort of thicker kind of paint, um, and what I'm already noticing is that it's almost looks more textured I suppose would be the word um you know to just just where I'm lightening off here compared to um you know just the shades and like in these sections here um these are all sort of nice and smooth whereas yeah where I'm highlighting not not everywhere but there are just some spots where yeah it just it's not as it's just not as smooth um so sort of against probably my my better judgment. Um, yeah, went back to some some thicker paint. Um, I think I'm going to go back and, and and thin this off more and try and get more to the consistency of this, just because of how well that worked. I think I was conscious of if I kept it really really thin because I'm trying to really just keep it on those ridges that it might flow into um, the recesses where I have shaded. Um, which I mean is a possibility with it being too thin, but I think it does need to be thinner than this. The other thing that was really, really good with the consistency for the shading is how well it feathered out. And I'm not finding that as much with the highlighting. It's still working, you know, still that contrast. I'm still being able to, to feather it out, but just not to the degree that I was able to with the shading. Um, and just a thing that I do need to go back and just fix up a little bit. Um, I have a bit too much of a defined line where I'm ending <clears throat> um, sorry, the, the highlighting, not so much in that it's not blending out, but just that where that blend finishes is, is there's too much of a consistent line with where that finishes and what it's ending up with, actually that leg there is not the best example, um, is that it looks like there's a point where just the shadow just stops and the highlighting starts like a little bit there, um, so maybe not as much as, oh, there's a good one there. So you can see that those highlights are real, uh, finishing at a real consistent spot. Um, same there. Um, there's a good one there. So just with, with, with those two spots especially, I just need to go back um, and just feather them out a little bit more so that where the highlight ends is less consistent so that it doesn't have that look that the shadow just finishes at this solid line. Anyway, so those are just the observations that I've made. So I'm going to thin my highlighting off more to get it closer to this consistency and just see how, how that works. If it does run a little bit, then I'll thicken it back up. Um, but yeah, I just want to get that smoother, um, that smoother paint going. Um, and yeah, I just need to feather, feather them out a little less um, consistently in terms of where they end so that I don't have that defined line. But um, yeah, that's what, I, what I'm going to give a go for the, um, for the rest of the highlighting.
right, so just on, as I'm on to the final step of the highlighting on the legs, um, the paint consistency has been much, much better since thinning it off. Um, where I went back and sort of re-highlighted, it's much, much smoother. It's lost that sort of, well, for the most part, it's lost that textured look that it had that I didn't want. Um, if I wanted to spend, you know, more time painting this guy, which I don't really because I've got other games that I do want to get onto, um, I'd go back and start re-highlighting again, really smooth it all off. But for the most part, I'm, I'm happy with how it's looking. So now I'm just doing the, the final step. I'm highlighting with pretty much just white now. And um, all I'm doing is just picking out with the legs just the spots that are really just picking up the most amount of light. So like where I did just then, um, I basically did on the right there, um, there's a little spot that just juts out a little bit more and it's just, yeah, a, a bit of a point. I put literally just a dot of white there and then just feathered it out. So I'm down to really, really small bits of highlighting now just to try and get that contrast. Um, so like, you know, I've, I've picked out the top of this wrinkle across the top there, but then not the one immediately under it or underneath it because the knee rolls down and tucks in behind but then as it comes back out over the shin picking that out so you can see there and then there and there where it juts back out so yeah just trying to pick out those highest points of contrast um just so that as it's in the middle of the table as i keep saying in the middle of the table that contrast needs to be seen highlighting the tongues here um, 
First I started mixing up the same um, sort of red-brown mixture that was the tongue, mostly red, a little bit of brown, whereas the lips are sort of probably mostly brown with a little bit of red, just for some differentiation. And then I decided to lighten that off with just some white, um, just for the highlighting. <clears throat> But what I found was that obviously by adding the white, it was pushing away from the red colour that I still wanted to keep, even though I wanted it to be lighter. So what I've done is actually just mixed in some, um, just one of the pinks that I've got. And that's just working that bit better because pink is obviously closer to red than what white is. And so it's still lightening it, but it's still keeping that red tone. Um, and yeah, I'm just sort of just picking out the edges because um, when I did the um, zenithal, prime um yeah really really strong white um out on the tips um which then sort of feathered out away from that um sort of valley i suppose of the tongue in the middle but yeah just wanted to mention that um just because yeah before i had a pink if i wanted to highlight with red i just added white um, but that took it away from being red whereas by adding the pink instead of the white it's just kept that red tone but it's still lightening it off Highlighting to the lips and to the tongue done, I think I'm going to call the actual the actual miniature itself finished. I'm just having a look over and I can't see anything else that I want to do. Um, really happy with the depth in the and the shading and the highlighting. Um, yeah, so I think we're going to leave him alone. So now it's going to be time to to do the base. So if you've been watching the other videos in this series so far, you know what I'm going to be doing. Um, he's a, you know, obviously, creature type mini. So um, I'm going to be doing this up to look like an earthy, muddy, uh, grassy um, looking scene. So all the creature looking ones are getting that sort of theme. And then the more human looking ones are getting the crack stone just to tie the human looking ones and then the creature looking ones in together. So the first step is just going to be to prime the base. So I'm just going to do that with my brush on primer and same way that I have been with all of the other ones, I'm going to do a curved edge so that when it's all painted up, it looks like um, that texture, um, that grassy, grassy, earthy look continues beyond the limits of where I've painted rather than doing a defined line, which makes it look much more like restricted. So yeah, so just going to prime, um, prime the base and yeah, then get on to um, making it look like a earth, muddy, grassy looking scene. So that prime's gone off, so now I'm ready to get into basing this guy and getting him done. So just before I primed it, I mentioned very, very briefly um, sort of what the process was going to be and that it's um, you know going to be the same process as the previous creature-based minis. So I sort of glossed over what I'll actually be doing. Um, since then, I've actually decided to go down a couple of different steps, sort of thematically the same sort of thing, but a couple of different steps. So I'm just going to run through what I'm going to be doing so that um, I can basically not stop between now and the end of the video. So I'm going to be painting, first of all, the primed section to look like mud rather than the earthy grassy look that I've done in the past. So to do that I did brown mixed in with some different shades of greens and yellows and then I stuck um, different 
tufts of grass down just to sort of give the effect of sort of being outside in the wilderness sort of thing. Um, that was fine for those smaller minis. It did enough to, to uh, give that look and a bit of context. But because there's a much bigger surfaces here, I want to sort of fill it out a little bit more and give it a more of a complete look. So what I'm going to do is lay that um, muddy look down first. So I'm going to use a base of brown and then mix in some black and some of the tanned skin colour um, just to give a bit of variety. And then over that sporadically, I'm going to glue down um, some of this uh, field grass, it's like static grass sort of stuff that, that I recently picked up. Um, so, yeah, it's just... Uh, yeah, just like that. Um, so that's going to just get stuck down sporadically, inconsistently, um, just to give a bit of sort of undergrowth um, growing um, out of the mud. And then there was a basing video that I watched on the Watch It Paint It channel. As a girl was showing uh, how she did the bases on an army that she did and um, did a sort of similar approach to this. But then what she did as some undergrowth to that um, like static grass was to use green tea leaves. So I'm going to give that a go as well because that looked really, really good. The, the effect worked quite well. Um, and then just to give a third um, sort of element um, or a third like, you know, level of vegetation, um, then I'll stick down some of those uh, tufts of grass. So there'll be the, um, the tea leaves will act as like the undergrowth, then the field grass will be the next level, and then those tufts then sticking up the top um, just to add a bit of, um, yeah, different levels to the vegetation. And then I'm going to grab some mulch and some things like that from my garden, break it up a little bit and stick it down to kind of act as like some logs and things like that, just to really sort of sell that, that you know, this guy's coming from, coming from the forest, wilderness sort of thing, somewhere outside. And yeah, just to give it a bit more of a complete look. Um, no idea how it'll go. This is my first time using a few of these things. So yeah, we'll, we'll just give it a go and see how it works. If it doesn't, take it all off, do it a different way, whatever. Um, the glue that I picked up to do this um, is just this craft PVA glue here. I just got this from an office supply place near me. Um, I did a little bit of research into different types of glue that people use, basically looking to see if what was marketed as basing glue was the same as PVA glue because it did essentially look the same. And yeah, people for the most part seem to use, just go and buy stuff like this rather than actual basing glue. But people did say make sure it is craft glue as opposed to just PVA glue, like the stuff that, you know, you, you used at school. So, yeah, so picks up some of this. So we'll see how that works. And, um, yeah, so that's the, that's the approach. So mud, then the static grass, under put undergrowth with the green tea leaves for that, then the, um, um, the tufts to add that extra level of vegetation um, and then a few little bits of little bits of mulch to, to act as some logs and This guy should be done. Um, I'll also be doing a matte varnish over the paint so that um, Because I'm going to have a lot more um, to work around in the base than in, in other minis where I was able to, to do the varnish After I stuck the tufts down. So yeah, so let's get this guy done. Alright, so that first coat is dry, but as you can see, I think you can pick it up maybe just around there. Um, with one coat, the 
just some of the primers still coming through so it's going to need at least another coat so what I'm going to do even though unfortunately I've spent the time um, blend of those different um, you know, the, the, the black and the, the skin tone through happy with how it looks I'm just going to do over the top of this just a straight brown coat let that dry and then come back and do the what will hopefully be the final coat again so just to get that muddy look um just so that yeah it doesn't have that you can sort of pick it up there just that little bit of texture that's coming through um and it just looks a bit washed out um under some of the light and i just i just want to try and avoid that um but yeah so just a straight brown coat and then i'll come back and do this effect again over the top unfortunately going to do it again but you know that's that's the way of it sometimes second time it's um the texture of it not the texture that i've painted but the actual texture of the paint itself is looking better so yeah i think that was worth doing that again so now i'm going to go on to sticking down some of this static or um field grass so i've just got a, a little um lid here from just a container out of the cupboard um, i'm just going to put some of the craft glue on there um, and then I'm going to be using just one of my old brushes I'm thinking probably my size 4 here um, to paint the paint the glue on and I'm just going to put it around sporadically no symmetry to it or anything like that just to try and make it look natural um, and then I just uh, grabbed out a pair of tweezers um, I will probably need to grab um, at some point a new pair that are that are longer um, but yeah just so that I can get sort of clumps um, and then just put it over the um, over the glue and then I've also just got a, a container here that I can then use to, to shake the excess off into there um, and then put it back into the container so that I don't lose any um, so yeah so that's the that's the next step so this is the first I'm having to got this so hopefully it works all right um, in my head, it looks really, really good. Um, we'll see how it goes in theory. Just 
while I'm gluing away, one thing I do try and stay mindful of when I'm doing something like this is that I do put it up against the feet. One thing I tend to find is that I always leave like uh, like a radius around the feet where I, where there isn't anything and it kind of always makes it look like the, um, you know, whatever the mini is has decided to actually stand in a bit of a clearing. I don't want that look. So yeah, just, um, making sure I add, um, add some right up against the, um, the feet there so that it does actually look a bit natural and that the, the spot where the mini is standing hasn't, hasn't been chosen for any particular reason. So as you would have seen there, I had to um, really work hard to um, get the, the grass off that was in some spots that I didn't really want it to be. It, um, the grass that wasn't actually on the glue, I guess, clung to the grass that was stuck to the, to the glue a whole lot more than what I thought I would. So first lesson learned, um, don't use so much glue. It, um, it really covered a lot more than what I thought. Um, but I've, I've got it down to a point where... Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy with how that's looking. So I'm just going to let that go off and properly dry. And um, then I'm going to stick down um, some of some of these tufts, just the swamp tufts that will sort of match the, the colouring there, just to give um, yeah, an extra um, level of vegetation. Um, and I'll be sticking down some of those um, tea leaves just as some undergrowth around some of these spots just around the edge of the grass um, and yeah that'll uh, that'll finish it off what I did actually realize while I was um, sticking the grass down is that I forgot to do the varnish so I might actually stop and do the varnish now at this point I might actually look I can see a couple little spots of glue um, sticking out where I knocked um, some of that grass off. I might let it all properly dry, do the varnish, um, and then come back and um, yeah, put the tea leaves down, um, those extra um, tufts, and then this guy will be done. So there we go, you can see kind of what it's done there, just like around here, you know, the sort of the, the, the um, more green tufts are sticking up a little bit there. And then, yeah, it looks like there's just sort of some dried leaves in between. Um, I'm really, really happy with how that looks. That is such a simple effect, and um, but pretty effective. Um, the only one thing I might do, just right underneath, there's none in there. Um, I might put like a bit of a clump in there, but other than that, um, yeah, really, really happy with that. Sorry guys, right now this is an awful angle for you. I don't want to tilt it back too much in case the bits of the tufts that I've just placed there fall off because I've got them in a spot that I'm happy with. All I'm doing is just, um, I've just positioned them um, just loosely. Now I'm just taking them off, putting a little bit of um, super glue on the bottom, positioning them with the tweezers, and then just with my hobby knife, just flaring out the, um, the tufts a bit so that the, the grass is spread rather than sort of being clumped.
All right, so there we go. Um, base is done there. Um, had a little bit of an attack of the super glue um, as I was squeezing it onto. I think it might have been this guy out here. Um, I think I, I must have left the lid off just a little bit too long and maybe it just sort of dried a little bit in the chip and I was squeezing and squeezing. It's like, come on, and then all of a sudden out it came um, and then, yeah, I had to really quickly wipe and, yeah, anyway, <laughs> came back and survived in the end. So I'm really, really happy with how that base is looking. This is the first time I've done really what I would consider an actual base. I mean, obviously, with the, with the smaller minis, I've done, you know, like that... Um, earthy grassy look and then just stuck some of these tufts on but this is the first time I've really gone through a process and actually tried to base properly and yeah really really stoked with how this has come up um you would have noticed I um started with some of these thicker um I mean, I mean this is just like a very very small branch but this in scale was just going to be way too big there was no way that it would sit so I went down to the much much smaller ones um and yeah just scattered them around but just the different levels of vegetation so starting with that muddy um paint job um and then doing the um, the static grass and those green tea leaves worked really really well um and then you can see with the with the tufts that i've stuck down that are sticking up a little bit just adds that extra level and then yeah just putting those um um just little twigs in between acting as logs so yeah other than a varnish um, this guy's done, so I'm just going to give that some time to properly dry and then i'll yeah hit it with a matte varnish and then he can finally be put to bed and put in the box. So with that matte varnish done, our Dark Young is finally finished. He is ready to go into the box and to go up against our paranormal investigators within the game. Um, I am super, super stoked with how this guy came out. Um, obviously, compared to all of the other minis that I've done in the past, this guy is much, much bigger. And I wasn't sure... Um, yeah, exactly how we'd turn out because I'm used to, you know, painting minis that are this guy with much, much smaller surfaces. Um, I thought having, yeah, these these bigger surfaces to paint and, um, yeah, just with sort of the extra detail, I didn't know if, like, my skills that I've built up so far in my time in the hobby, which hasn't been that really that long, um, whether they'd sort of stand up to, to this guy. But, no, I'm really, really happy with how he came up. You know, the, um, the concept that I had, well, the... The approach that I took at the start was to make the tentacles really, really stand out, um, and I think I managed to achieve that. I think they're where, um, you know, sort of people's eyes are going to be drawn to uh, straight away, um, and then getting those blends from one part to another sort of kind of makes that quite seamless, um, and then really, really happy with the shading and the highlighting that I got through the legs especially, um, and using that um, layering approach as opposed to just using a wash and then um, and then bringing the base coat um back up from there and then highlighting. Um, so yeah, so I got some really, really good depth. Um, and then obviously having my first go at doing a proper base and yeah, really, really happy with how that came out. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, as I mentioned, I watched that video on the Watch It Paint It channel um, and I just sort of more or less took the same approach. And yeah, there's some really, really good levels of vegetation in there and just kind of really completes the look as opposed to what I've done with the smaller ones, which was just enough to kind of sell the the context of where they would be. But with this guy, I really wanted to actually create a, a, a proper scene or landscape. Um, and yeah, really, really happy with how that's come up. So overall, um, this is absolutely my, my favorite mini that I've painted both in terms of the actual enjoyment of painting, but then the, the final sort of end product. Um, there's, there's really nothing in here that I would like to go back and, and change. I think over time I would be able to do it better, but the overall look, really, really happy. 
So, yeah, he's, uh, he's finally done. This guy took a lot, lot longer than any other Mini that I've done so far. Um, and, yeah, now that it's done, I'm happy, ready to go on to, on to some other ones. So I really, really hope that you guys have enjoyed watching me paint uh, the Dark Young. Um, as always, hope there's something that you've been able to take away from this and using your own painting, or at the very least, you've simply enjoyed watching me, watching me paint him up. Um, and yeah, please do uh, leave a comment down below, something that you liked about the video, something that you, th you think can be improved, um, and also whether um, the way that I was putting the paint colours up in the corner here was effective, or if you think there's another way that I can go about doing that, I'd like to hear back about that as well. But yeah, so please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed to keep up to date with these videos as they keep coming out, not just from Mansions of Madness, but different series as well. And uh, yeah, I think with uh, with all that being said, um, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.